Actually, I thought the biggest signing of this weekend Tough. was Scotty Upshaw to St. Louis. It I mean, was. In your world. Yeah. It was. 13th forward, Scotty Upshaw signs with, who cares, St. Louis Blue. <laughs> <laughs> More after 6.30. We get a lot of shots, everybody come to their net. We, we just have to get more and more pucks to their net. We used to talk about in Vancouver getting pucks on net and pucks on net. Well, that's the key. we got to get the puck on net. What were you saying about putting pucks on net? Continue to put pucks on net and uh, it's just getting pucks on net. Pucks on net and, and uh, driving and making a hard night on it. Live on tape from Gita's apartment, our palatial estate on the 23rd floor. This is Pucks on Netta. Vancouver Hockey Podcast doesn't talk about fantasy or fancy stats. But we did talk about it before recording. We will talk about mass shootings. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, we'll sure. talk about that eventually. We're also we're going to hope to be a bit of a distraction for the next little bit and uh, talk about hockey and not talk about Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers or... Still with us. Yeah, he's still there. He's still kicking and uh, he's built to last. And uh, we won't try our best not to talk about Vegas. Last week it was kneeling. This week it's a uh, horrible horrible events yeah uh and uh, and a very disturbing response by the american people as well what was that what did they do now uh gun sales in the united states today that are going through the roof oh. like gangbusters not that it makes it okay but that happens after every large i've got to say large-scale mass shooting yeah. because because people, need to, pro- right now? people no. need to protect themselves there right off the hop let's get into it there no. has been a mass shooting for every day of the year Mass shooting defined as four uh, or more people shot at once Jeez. in America in 2017. Oh. So if you don't think there should be at least a conversation about gun regulation, you're wrong. All right. Thank you for joining <laughs> us, wherever you got us from. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at PucksNetCA or PucksNetCa. Ka. And uh, if you want to... So dark. Sorry. Thanks, for gu- thanks, guys, for really bringing the show to a... Nice little boil there to start. We don't we don't hide from issues on pucks on net, and I think that with especially with a hockey team just going into there, you know this is you know security and what's going on in the states. I think we it is relevant. I know that this is a hockey show, but I I, I kind of think fair. that we should talk about it because no, it's an important good. issue to a lot of people. That's fair. That's fair. I I accept that. Uh, we're gonna. It's our big show. Uh, it's our NHL season preview. Um, I'm just gonna go, which we will get into. This will not be an all mass shootings episode yeah. all the time. Fe- featuring the pucks on net ten, our ten teams to uh, to look at this year. And I look forward to you guys. If you're uh, confused as to why we would say this is a team to watch for, but we'll get into that. Um, not necessarily for good or bad reasons. Yeah. <laughs> just because arbitrarily. The, the Mini- arbitrarily, you should watch Minnesota Wild games because <laughs> they got some guys. <laughs> it's cheaper than sleeping pills. <laughs> <laughs> They're not on the list. Uh, I just want to say what, uh, thank you for downloading us wherever you got us from. Um, it's the start of the uh, the hockey season, so I'll just go over these plugs really quick. We've you know we really hope that you could support the show. If you don't want to do it monetarily, if you want to just help us out, tell a friend. Let somebody know. Say, hey, listen to the show for a while. It's pretty good. Uh, you can also rate and review us on iTunes. We always say every year it's the best way to help us defeat the horrible Steve Jobs algorithm. Get us on the Apple Podcast page. Somebody looking for Are a Are we new not there yet? We're sometimes there, but it's the algorithm. So if you We it? yo-yo. Sometimes we're in, sometimes we're out. Or if you're a loyal listener and Patreon backer Heather Smart, who only gave us a four-star review, maybe you can go back Why? and give us a five-star <laughs> review. <laughs> Just saying, just could saying. You, could you write Ryan an email and tell us why and what we must do to get that fifth star? It's because I forgot to say her name on the air when she became a Patreon backer. Oh, okay. And so I'm to blame. Got this it. is all your fault. Yeah, it's all my fault. So if you okay. want, you know, we're just looking, if you can help the show, if you've been listening for a while and you haven't rated and reviewed on iTunes or, um, or told a friend or tweeted about it, you know, just like the Facebook page, just get the word out there. But if you do want to support the show monetarily and give us a couple of bucks, couple of bucks, you can head on over to patreon.com slash pucks on net. And we did uh, get pretty uh, slack in the summer. And I apologize. Um, you know, Gita was in China. You're really pa- dropping the ball. Paul was in Europe. Dave was working his ass off. He's all over the place. In a dark room, no windows, I, all for you kids. I was, I was, I don't know what I was doing, but uh, <laughs> Paul. Just, just say thank you. I do watch most tanning. of those movies, even though right now you're working on the DC, and I'm more of a Marvel guy. Well, don't worry, I'm switching I was, teams. I've heard. 
I was tanning. That's it's what I did the, all summer. It's on the internet now. <laughs> so we're Big gonna, news. So we're going to have a, a Patreon episode, a, a full episode for you this week as well as five minutes for paying. So if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash pucks on net. And longtime listener, Josh Gould out uh, near Kennewick near the Tri-Cities, he just pledged $25. Wow. wow. Still Thank won't you. say anything good about the Messiers in the Tri-City Americans. <laughs> so, uh, Josh, uh, I'm going to send to you the elusive Pucks on Net Bill McClear- McCreary? McCreary. Oh. Bill McCreary shirt your way. Oh, wow. And uh, that's going to go the, the coming days because, yeah, if you pledge 25 bucks, you get a shirt, the puck. He's already got a puck and all the jazz. couple of pucks. Yeah, or just five bucks. You know, whatever. If you want to support the show, that's great. If you just want to keep listening... That's fine, too. Gita, you made a horrible, disgusted face there for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't a deliberate or a Oh, okay. Just she's particular. watching the football game over your shoulder, and she was not happy about the Kansas City oh, Chefs. Oh, mean nothing to the me. Sh- this, this means nothing to and me. And this is a racist team bowl. This is the racism bowl. they got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Washington Redskins. <laughs> It's America's sport. <laughs> they win blankets from Roger Goodell, but I wouldn't put your face on them. Cleveland <laughs> Indians in attendance today. They got an off day. Tonight's game has been brought to you by smallpox. That's smallpox. Uh, so to quote... Because uh, uh, we don't vaccinate our kids and we don't regulate guns in America. I don't touch football and I'm not touching anything Dave's to talking quote, about. No, to no, quote, no, back to hockey. To quote Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, don't bore us, get to the chorus. I'm not a corpses. <laughs> I really love Tom Petty, so if we make any jokes yeah. about him... It's uh, just to try and lighten the mood because that was, down. that was a horrible thing to wake up That to. was the LAPD. Yeah. They, 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 yeah they, it's not like them to f*** shit up. Oh, wait. <laughs> They're like the worst police department ever. All I right. did like that a bunch of people on Twitter were like, I am not believing this until someone other than TMZ confirms it. So I'm glad <laughs> to see people are looking for sources that are trusted, Yeah, not part of the... Okay. Now, now on to some media. sources, we got some new rule changes in the NHL that I learned about on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, they're tweaking the rule book. Okay. It's like slam ball. We change the rules every week. Saturday night, so you haven't noticed all of this? goal is worth two points? And there's money pucks now. <laughs> in the third period, they... Here comes the money puck! Is there a three-pointer? <laughs> yeah, three-pointer. Um, Paul, you brought that up. I got... I the noticed slashing. The slashing, which I'm a big fan of because the, sta- the, the Stanley Cup playoffs last year were atrocious for that. Okay. So they are just calling slashing the Slashing's way they should Slashing's been be. pretty bad for a long time. There's a lot of little things like that. And the face-offs, I'm happy that they're calling like the guys that cheat. And mind you, yeah. like when I'd play ball hockey, I'd always lean into the guy and kick it back. But That's why they called you <laughs> Lean Guy Paul. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't they trying. They used to call me Wellwood at the BCIT League. Oh, That's because yeah. you <laughs> ate a lot of burgers <laughs> before <laughs> the game. That, that was why. Like a Wellwood over there crushing another Baconator <laughs> pregame. And then I'd score a goal every game. And that's just, that's Wellwood. Kyle Wellwood did let us know that that whole McDonald's bag thing was fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Uh, but I, yeah, the NHL released a great okay. video that explained the rules. And it's like, well, what's, they explained that a lot, one of the things they're trying to prevent with the faceoffs is the leaning into each other and almost headbutting one okay, another yeah, yeah, and then yeah. blocking it with your skate. Yeah. So that's good. Um, slashing, it was really bad to watch in the Stanley Cup Finals. This is an epidemic that I am very familiar with because I, I just, my thumb, uh, we haven't seen you guys in a week, just got out of a wrap. Oh, yeah? Because I fractured it last week at hockey. And my one of my teammates as well had a similar injury because here's what's happening now to us in the ashl as me and a few of my friends stay slim and trim and everybody gets fatter and slower as they get old (laughs) right uh it's not that they're trying to hurt us it's just like the aggressive slashing is the only defense that they can apply it's like playing being lazy in nhl video games yeah you're just tap 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 tap. is this when you were playing the trash pandas or whatever it was no this was me (laughs) playing against the against the ctv canadians uh last week in a 6-5 win that was a spirited affair (laughs) uh but i was on a partial breakaway and uh I'm not going to say it was Perry Selkowski, but I'm not going to say <laughs> it wasn't. He, still, he doesn't even really work there anymore. Uh, he's still on the team. Anyway, no, it was just some camera guy. Did they cut their entire sports department? Yeah, they don't do sports yeah, anymore. So. I think he's on 650 well, I now. Took, I took a pretty wicked shot um, and uh, woke up the next morning in a fair amount of difficulty. And yeah, it oh, turns geez. out hairline fracture. So the same, Sorry to hear that. Well, so, the same thing happened to Mark Mathod. But you know, it chop right off. Yeah. Well, that's the NHL. They chop harder there. But. Uh, the other rule, which but no, I- that that like it is an ep- like we actually sent an email to the league. Like it is an epidemic. Like we're all getting hacked to shit. Yeah, and okay. it's not fun. Like it doesn't make it fun. So and people were complaining about all the penalties and stuff through the preseason. But this is what happened with all the obstruction yeah. stuff, and they've eased up on that. There's a learning curve. They should stick with it. I know yeah. it makes for boring hockey, and there was that whole memo that went out during the Gina games to to <laughs> yeah. back off. But like, you know, there's you gotta have, think. 
you know, short term pain for long term yeah, gain. Exactly. So I actually criticize the NHL fairly significantly for rolling for for giving in after like three preseason games and a couple of angry tweets from oh. fucking basement gym in Squampton. <laughs> so, you know, like it's going to suck for a bit and there's going to be 40 minutes worth of power plays for a couple of months, but the players and the coaches are smart and they'll, they'll, they'll get the gist and, and they'll back up because you like, how tragic would it be if we lose Connor? Yeah. Because what well, fucking some slow bastard like Scott Lawton gives him a chop. <laughs> Brandon like, Manning back for revenge. It'll get shittier players out of the league. Guys who can't, keep, just like how the, like how the that, rules. Yeah. How Gills and the, and the freaking Hatcher brothers and were put Brett, out to and, pasture and the Brett Hall's, you know, yeah. real slow goons like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Brett Hall. Is Yarmar Yeager going to be okay with all these rules? Is he going to be able to keep up? Just uses that big wide ass of his to <laughs> <laughs> Yarmar Yager is like a half court basketball player. Like I like I've been fairly critical of people who've been like I don't yeah. understand why no one's signing Yager. I totally get it because like I said, thirty teams, thirty one teams in the NHL, no one's looking to get slower, and he right. he can't skate. Well, but, he's kind of like you were saying way back when we were talking about a Gimlet of the Kings and stuff. They play half court ball as much as yeah. possible, or they were trying to. So what? as long as your whole team's not that way, or if you're around that type of well, this play, is this is what I'm thinking. If, if Calgary would really benefit if they stick to the slashing rule there's going to be a lot more power plays <laughs> and you play half court ball when there's power plays yep. that's all I was going to ask I'm like what is Calgary planning to do this season and Dave just summed it up they're yeah. going to have one goalie you got to skate to the blue line to make it to get Yer- yourself on Yermer Yager yeah. on a power play with Johnny Goudreau and Sean Monaghan will be pretty cool they would be up there in the zone and he'd be like yeah I'm, I'm on my way just just hold the I'm coming <laughs> I'm coming that was like um. but once he gets there yeah half wall and he's still got sick silky mitts they've, like, the they've got a young fast team too though so even if he's playing you know five on five and he's a little behind the play the late guy can they just push him it'll, along it'll be the trailer coming in the late guy coming in <laughs> like really late like so really late calgary i think was a good pick for him he could have gone in somewhere although toronto's already got their old guy with the uh, marlo but uh a but marlo like still that, skates really well he's got yeah. freaking wheels i just mean a young faster also, team is marlo I like that. not like 10 years younger than yager yeah okay. <laughs> here's a good one i gotta give my i gotta give my a shout out to my teammate uh and friend ken beauchamp yep. uh longtime listener who pointed this one out today at the office patreon.com slash pucks on net ken yermer yager <laughs> drafted in the 1990 mm-hmm. nhl entry draft alongside keith kachuk yeah yermer yep. yager 2017 now teammates with matthew kachuk yep. keith kachuk's son Oh yeah, and the Canucks could have drafted Keith Kachuk or Yermer Yager. <laughs> no, no, they wouldn't draft. They le- we learned like last year that Yager only would go to Pittsburgh. Yeah, he said, "I'm not going to the but, top five. But yeah, Yager was drafted alongside Keith, Keith Kachuk, Kachuk, and now he's a teammate of the guy's son. That's, that's pretty. Hyster- that's pretty wild. It's hysterical. Yeah. Wild stuff. Um, Matthew Kachuk, best Twitter handle in the world. What is it? Kachuk E. Cheese. That's pretty good. Yeah, follow him. If only if only Max Domi yeah. could think. <laughs> What? Max Domi. Max, come here a second. Uh, have a seat. Sit down. Time to talk to Uncle Dave. Just, just don't, bud. Just just don't. Like I, Whatever your intentions were, whether they were racist or just misguided or you were trying to articulate something that was going to be helpful and patriotic, besides the point. We're fairly sure it came from a place of ignorance. I don't think he mean to spur on conversation <laughs> one way or You're the other. You're a 20-year-old hockey player that we all know definitely did not go to college and probably... <laughs> You played for the London Knights, bud. We're lucky if you can read, and that's that's fine. London Knights Senior Secondary School. It's hard to go to school when the when the Hunter brothers got you running suicides and burpees. Okay, I get it. So you stick to that, and we'll let the big boys and girls of the world. You want to know why? He, stick he, to what? He, stick to their opinions on on matters. He, he like this. messed up because he's so used to playing in Arizona where nobody pays attention to him. He thinks that the same applies to Twitter. Well, he's been in Arizona like, too oh, long. They're putting up walls all over the place. Um, you you th- got you got to let him say you know, the, the whole conversation when it comes to well taking a knee and stuff like that is athletes have can have an opinion and can share it and uh, it's just even if we don't agree with it, I don't call think him he, on it, make him think about it. I don't it. think he came from a place of intent. No. All right. So back, back on chatter. track. You guys want to talk about Scotty Upshaw? It's literally the next thing on the list. Uh, I wanted to say something about slow players. Okay. And that it's that I was at. Uh, I spent. I watched as Dave was. Dave, you had a very good segment last week talking about watching players from the 500 level, and I did keep a close eye on. I'm how sorry that I had to bail on you. That's fine. On the third period, I spent the entire uh, 
the entire game, just the, the third period, just watching it from the press box. So it felt fun. Uh, one thing I noticed is that on television, the Sedines, they look really slow. Okay. Yeah. From, I, you know, around ice level, still pretty slow. Yeah. From 500, from the press box, they look like they're sk- skating in quicksand and they're uh, the slowest beer leaguers I've ever seen. Let me, you guys didn't, t- you talked a bit about the 500 level viewing and, and you were saying you wished I had, I just listened to the episode yesterday. I really wish you you'd know, been I, on last week because you've, you've seen just as many games as I have from that perspective. So I would have liked to have heard, well, now it's a chance. Well, I was just going to say when you talk about do the right being slower, everyone looks much, much slower. You can see the game develop so much more from the 500 level. People talk about, if you normally sit in the you know upper rafter seats of yeah. fan seats, and then you go to a game, and I've only sat at an NHL game once at ice level, okay. and the speed is amazing. Yeah, it's wild. You don't when you're down realize there. how much faster just yeah. perception is when you're at ice huh. level versus when I normally sit in the upper deck myself if I'm there as a fan. But yeah, the higher up, the more you see of the ice the slower it, it appears, which is good for analyzing the game. And particularly for defensemen, which is my point. Yes. Like, I, the Sedins, I've always considered that relative, but I guess that's because I've seen so many games from up there. I've never really thought of them as looking any slower than anybody else. Okay. It, it's all relative depending on where you're watching them. Yeah. From. But I just my point was watching defensemen make reads, watching good defensemen always make the right play from up there and watching bad ones always make yeah. the wrong decision. <laughs> no, and I you like see to- his three outs. I'm like, he's got four options. Three are okay. One is disaster. He yeah. picked disaster. He keeps picking disaster. <laughs> but yeah, you, you brought up the good point last week. It just, yeah, having options down there as opposed to just sort of like panicking or having one option. And if that doesn't work out, you just drop back to, you know, no, it's whatever. Like, it's like guys like, you know, guys like Ben Hutton who are confidence players, I call them confidence players. When he's feeling it, he makes the right read, but if he's had a couple of bad plays, it seems to snowball and you watch him continuously make worse and worse decisions cuz he's rushing. And from that angle, he's that rushing? Pers- rushing. Oh. No, rushing. he hasn't left. He's not in Omsk. Um <laughs> Actually, and that brings up another one is like Triampkin, like everybody, you know, loving on Triampkin. And that's one thing I noticed about him, aside from his size, is he always seemed to make the safe play. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, there's a bad option. Will he take it? He never really seemed to. He was, he seemed like, he he seemed like he was a very smart player that like, he just stuck to the basics. Yeah. He says, what can I do to not get my ass eaten out here? And he, uh, that's, it was just a nice thing to see about him. Yes. Not like that kind of eaten. Chewed out. There we go. It's an interesting choice of words. That's all oh, I, get, I was I reacting down to. I the gutter, too. Oh, he's just seen the faces here. This is why we've got to have cameras in here. Um, Let the record show that I did not jump on that easy nugget. <laughs> we didn't say nothing. I just shook my head and looked disappointed. Uh, if you want that kind of action, you just go down to Gorgamish, just talk to Anvil <laughs> around 3 a.m. Yeah, they, they don't serve beer there. Just water. Yeah, just so you can come down. You can dance off your drugs. That's right. Before we get into the pucks on that Well, I'm dancing off that fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nikita. It's best, bro. <laughs> uh, there's the update of the coaches challenge, which I think is fantastic. I think we all agree that for offsides, if it's unsuccessful, you get a minor penalty. I like that. Okay. They, they, you know what though, and we talked about this before. They got to go one step further, and they got to fix what wasn't broken in the first place. Little human error in sports is nice. Yeah, okay. baseball. Don't f-ing review offsides. The game is slow enough. I think that they. It's so annoying. I hate it. I hate it. I don't I hate mind. It. I don't mind that. No, but it was it what? was put in place. It was put in place yeah. for that egregious. There was like a Colorado Avalanche offside. Colorado, Colorado Avalanche. avalanche. <laughs> that like Matt some 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 guy that Joe Sackick refuses to trade was offside by like four feet. Look and at that smug bastard, he's got all his fingers. <laughs> 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 and they they put that in play to prevent that from happening. Right. So that's fine. But when we're talking inches, like do we see a sliver of white between the blue line and the puck? Yeah, okay, you know, that's the kind of stuff that it's got to it just go. it all here's the thing about hockey. And this is an opinion. It's not fact. But for me, it always seems like when watching my favorite teams or whatever, or watching even just a game between any two teams, these things have a kind of a way of evening themselves out a little bit. Yeah. Like, like good breaks, bad breaks. It's like, I don't mind some of the video review stuff they're doing in baseball, but the second they start appealing balls and strikes calls, I'm out. Yeah. And, and that's th- what this feels like. Video review for whether a puck goes over the goal line uh-huh. or if there's even goalie interference. Like if it's a direct impact on a goal absolutely please review it get the call right yep. on an offside f- it it delays the game way too much and like 
the Canucks score goals. Like I'm a Canucks fan. I work for the team. I'm on the payroll. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm biased. It is. It is what it is. When the Canucks score, I find these days I'm on pins and needles. Like, Are they going to call it back? I can't enjoy it as a fan. <laughs> and Uncle Gary really needs to hear that feedback because it's true. He listens. We don't can't. Worry. We. It makes it hard for fans to get lost in the moment of the game when you're certain that everything is going to a 10 minute video delay. Yeah. It's terrible for the game. I'm very upset about it. Great. Minor penalty? Awesome. Get it out of the game. We don't need it. It's stupid. Peter. On the no, other side... Had... Oh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, Gita. I was just going to say, you've had referees determining the outcomes for years. Why is this a problem all of a sudden? Like Them's the breaks. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. I was going to say, on the other side, though, we have seen so many wrong calls on the ice. I've even made the argument to the point, put a full-time official above... Watching from above. Yeah. They you can gotta make put calls. a big asterisk on the league before video review. Hey, Do you? Yeah. Why? Because all those goals Green Gretzky scored, half of them are probably offside because I don't know, some ref some big fat referee was too slow to catch up or he was late in the smoke or you know, you know how it's it was. It's one of those things I don't the think. The Don Koharski era. <laughs> <laughs> you both make good points. But it comes down what I th- what I compare the offside thing to mm-hmm. is like in baseball where you can challenge basically if a player stays on the base and then the player's cleat or foot or leg comes up by like, what are you doing? I was trying to like pull Gita's script away because she dropped it just to oh. be a shit, but she's fast. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it compares, I compare it to baseball where uh, they're looking to see if a player's cleat comes off the bag by like half an inch. And it's like, it's, that's it's not too what, much replay. It takes me out of the game as a viewer. And like, let's be honest about what this is, is it's entertainment. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, whether yeah, great, you got the call exactly right. Fine. Yeah. But like that human error where referees blow calls is kind of part of the fun. Like it it really is. We're taking that that element out of the game and like people need to kind of stop and look at that. Like sure, it's not fair, but life's not fair. Yeah. And yeah. and therefore sports should be a microcosm of that because it really is. It's the human experience. Well, it's, you know, it's but shouldn't we be trying to make life more fair? <laughs> In a greater sense, in I addition got, to the game? We got stuff to do, blown. Paul. We don't got time to make shit fair. That's uh, that's communism. I don't I'm going to just take a knee over here on Dave's comments. <laughs> All right. I don't think a blown call is fun. I think it's kind of fun, especially when it goes you your way. You mean like when uh, there was a foot in the grease or something <laughs> and the Stanley Cup is on the line? And you know what? We're still talking about that. You know what? If <laughs> Dallas, Dallas, <laughs> Dallas beats Buffalo in the 99 Stanley Cup Finals fair and square, who gives a shit? That lives in infamy, and it's part of the game. Are you not I don't have enter- a problem with are that. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I am having so much Buffalo fun. wins the Stanley. <laughs> Buffalo wins the Stanley Cup. No big deal. Brett Hull and Ken Hitchcock win a Stanley Cup together. Ed <laughs> Belfour is a billionaire now. <laughs> it's the way it was supposed to be. All right. No, but you know what I mean. I know. Right? You, I know what you mean, and I think that the problem hockey is hockey already takes three goddamn hours. It's too long, and now we're making it longer. And you know what? And like I said, sometimes, sometimes you get the breaks. Sometimes you don't get the breaks. But I guarantee, if you think about it over the course of your entire life, and this is more than sports, it's life as well. It all kind of evens out anyway. What I like about this is before any time there was a goal, they would just throw it on. The, they would just throw their imaginary flag on the field on the ice and say, yeah. "Let's check it for offside," and okay. that's what slowed down the game. That hail mary, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we got anything here. Now with the penalty, and I hate it as yeah. a fan. So the pe- like, like Paul, didn't you hate that? Like every wait, wait. T- every just time a goal was, every time a goal was scored off the rush. On like a three on two, we had to f***ing wait. I'm with Ryan on this one. I like putting just a little bit more so you can't just use it as a free timeout. I or think that's what we're on the same page. So is that it? Every time, just, every time I want to challenge, and I can challenge as many times as I want, but if I'm wrong, I get penalized, and yeah. that's it. So basically for offsides... You, you should get only get one a game, too. Offsides, you get minor penalties. Okay. Goalie interference. Yeah. You, it's losing a five minutes in a minute. Yeah, you will never like. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it, but you'll never get me to agree that this is good for hockey because it's not. But uh, yes, but I can do that as many times as I want. Yeah, you know what I've noticed in in my lifetime. That's excessive too, though. For offside, anytime you micromanage anything, it gets better, right? Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like. Oh yeah. We all grew up loving hockey, and we're all here sitting here in this room. We watch hockey obsessively. Uh, you know, we some of us still play, even though we shouldn't, because we're getting too old. My um, little wrist of yours. Yeah, uh, that's my thumb. <laughs> uh, you know, we all grew up loving the game with this amount of human error. It doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it better. 
They, uh, they, it doesn't. I'm sorry. It doesn't. We all lived with these mistakes for years. I don't know why we needed to change it now to slow down the game and have smart coaches take advantage of the rules and ruin the flow of the hockey game. I think it's a lot like we were talking about the slashing rules. You give it another year or so, uh, the review upstairs is going to be faster. It's, it's going to be a quick decision. It's terrible television. It's terrible for the fans. All right. Well, speaking of terrible television, <laughs> let's, let's let's all give it a chance. <laughs> I, uh, I did yeah. last year. I did not like it. Yeah, but did you not had, care for it. At you all. had coaches that were just like, uh, I'm going to challenge that it's a uh, goalie interference. Oh, I'm going to challenge it at offside 20 minutes later. Okay, I guess we're, I guess we lose. And that's what that's the problem. Was. But sometimes those challenges are going to work because you're going to want that break. And you're like, I'll take the two minute penalty to get them a breather. Uh, speaking of that, you yeah. cannot you can no longer take uh, timeouts after icing calls. If See you, that I I like, but that could also lead to uh, injuries, which people don't think about. I suppose so. Yeah. Players. Players make mistakes when they're injured. Paul's or when getting they're, when ready to throw a challenge flag. Yep, challenge flag. Well, I was going to say, and they only got one anyway. So, I mean, if it was a really bad situation, they'd use it, but then they couldn't do it again. Like, yeah, that one. I'm. I didn't I, mind it, but I'm okay with the change. Yeah, like, they're trying to punish people from icing. They're trying okay. to eliminate you know icing they, plays. Do you know what they did for like a year? That one rule change that I liked a long time ago. What was that? Was they went back? It was how it was originally, and then they went back. When you get scored on shorthanded, yeah. the penalty keeps going. Isn't that still a thing? No, it ex- oh. it expires. No, as like soon if as you it... score a power play goal, yeah, you're still going. on the power play. Like the, oh. the player serves the full two minutes, regardless of yeah. however many goals you get. Oh, oh, that that's a thing now. It w- that and that's how it was no, way back. It was before. It was so anymore. it was way back in the yeah. day. They brought it back for a season in the mid 2000s. Uh. Was it? Yes, it was. What it might have been the nineties or something. Maybe that late. Was a long maybe late. Time ago maybe late nineties. Uh, they should bring that back. That was so great. You're, t- you're telling me if I'm sh- if my team's shorthanded, yeah, I score a goal. No, you give up a goal. Yeah, you're still shorthanded. Oh, like a major penalty. The yeah. way a major penalty yes. works. They treat yeah. minor penalties like major penalties. That'd be intense. Two minutes for hook and it's two minutes for hook and they're bud. That's a good way to bring up the goal the goal score. But without mm. without art without changing the game artificially too too much. That's yeah. what I'm no, saying. No, no, here's like, what you do. That's a nice little tweak without changing the game entirely. I, I can get on board with that one. Yeah, you you, you did the crime. You how can't about do some the time or do, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. If we need more goal scoring and we don't want to make the nets bigger and we don't want to make the pads bigger. It's a nice clean one. Why don't we just like inject all the goalies now that are like registered with the NHLPA with like some sort of like shrinking thing and so everybody's Darren Pang size Pang or size and then Ryan's been watching too many superhero movies like yeah. I'm just saying it's your fault Dave hey I didn't work on Ant-Man Ant-Man sucked <laughs> alright so every year we do it it did and All I right. like Marvel oh, I'm sh- real excited about these 10 teams okay so last couple of years we've done 10 teams to look at because one year we did 30 teams and it was the, like the most boring shit ever because we had to talk about Columbus or did Carolina. we do 30 teams one year one we time? Yeah, one year we did that's an awful it, it turned idea. into this team is good you this did, team you, is bad you did not list all Canadian teams well no, who cares about Ottawa <laughs> <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody not even people in Ottawa they care only about made Ottawa. The final four last year. No, but even Ottawa's <laughs> like. No one noticed. Shh. They're like, don't talk about us. I went to a bar in Utah on the side of the freeway to watch it because it was the only place I could find to watch uh, game seven of the Eastern Dude, Final. I used to pay for Sunday games. I did watch games. it. I did watch it on my phone in Yangon, Burma. Actually. There you go. I went out of my way though, and, I, and there's a dude, and he was married to a woman from Medicine Hat, so he's like, "Oh, the hockey game's on!" So we watched the game together in that's awesome, middle of nowhere, Utah. But it's like they've already come out and said, like, you know, they don't care about us. It's all about Toronto now. Like they have this very us against the world mentality in, in Ottawa. Well, for Just move to London. For not talking about them, we sure talked about them. <laughs> all right, the first team we're going to talk about the pucks on net. The pucks on net ten is the Pittsburgh Penguins. All Last right. year. They uh, are the defending Stanley Cup champions two times over. They're going to the White House. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they win. Yeah, they go to the White House. And uh, they are currently like the favored to three-peat to be the first NHL team since what? The Oilers? Or the, would it be Oilers no. or Islanders? The Oilers never did three in a row. It would be the Islanders. Every year I say I don't like that defense, and every year they win the Stanley Cup. So, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's not much to be said. They lost a handful of guys. They lost a handful of uh, yeah, like. They got us Benin- Did they lose everyone to Vegas? Uh, Benino went to Nashville. Oh. Kunitz went to Tampa Bay. Trevor, uh, I don't know where Trevor Daly went. Matt Cullen. Ron Hainsey, he went to Toronto. 
and Mark Strait went to Montreal, which is just, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> and they added uh, anti Niemi, so they are pro Niemi. Okay. I'm very anti Niemi. Matt Hunwick and Jared Tenorti, although I think he cleared waivers. I'd be is impressed cl- if someone made a new joke. <laughs> that's a good joke. Um, <laughs> There's not much to talk about with the Penguins, except they, g- they could win again. They yeah. also probably won't just because of the odds. And the defense does worry me. Yeah. And Nick Benino. Nick Benino's a good hockey player, and he just gives them that third option. I don't think they even have a, th- a set third, a set in stone third line center there. Oh. Maybe they'd be interested in a Brandon Sutter. No, yeah, they didn't want him the last. The, uh, the, found- oh, the foundation, oh, the foundational one. Remember Jim Benning put that tag on him. Poor uh, Brendan. And now he's on the fourth line with Louis. Have Erickson. we not? He got gaunt. Not to tag our players. He's the foundational one. That's a great wrestling nickname. Foundation of the future. <laughs> foundation of the future. Uh, the one thing to talk about with Pittsburgh is they they have all those beautiful players of the NCAA. Uh, either Bra- Kunackle, Kunackle, Sherry, Brandon Rust. What that was say? my main. But I was gonna say like they lost quite a few veteran bodies, but which doesn't yeah. affect Promote. you come playoff time. But they've done so well with drafting and signing youngsters they lately. Got- like I'm really excited to see more Pens games with whatever kids wind up in the lineup. Yeah, they got more result. talent in Scranton than Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, last year they lost to uh, Washington in six, which is funny because usually it's Washington that always loses. Good team. Right. Good team. It's a good team, the that Leafs Toronto Maple Leafs team. that series. They could have, but they just... Did- I don't know. The why curse they, of Brooks. They like. learned. They learned a lesson. It was. A, it was a. It was a series that. Yeah, they could have won, but you. But they probably in the long run. This is going to sound weird. Yeah. Probably better off that they. No, didn't. that's that's exactly it. You probably needed to learn that lesson. Austin Matthews is quite cocky, isn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah, with his weird outfits and his <laughs> tall hats. His weird hats. Anyway, they got Patrick Marlowe, and usually I'm against signing a 38 year old guy, but this is a guy whose production and body has held up pretty nicely. He oh, looks pretty you sound good. Like you've had a change of heart. Well. <laughs> I don't like it because of the money and because it kind of steers them away from what they're doing. Yeah. But it's one or, year. Or it keeps them right on track. But if he can keep up with them, and from what I've seen in the preseason, he looks pretty good. You don't like it because of the money? In a year when he can't play anymore, they're just going to put him on long term injured reserve and they'll be fine. <laughs> he'll be on a line with, Nath- you- he'll be on a line with on Nathan a- Horton and, and Joffrey Lupo. Joffrey Lupo. <laughs> <laughs> What are you? Yeah, what are you worried about, man? He Something. failed his fitness. Um, <laughs> he's got pretendinitis. I've written these problems down for each team, and what I wrote was too young, too fast, too skilled, and too handsome. They look yeah. good in those blazers. I feel like they might sign Joe Thornton next summer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. I, I made the bold prediction, I think, two weeks ago that I expect them to go to the Eastern Conference final. I, I second that. I think Who that is possible. Say? Who are you talking about? The Canadians or the Leafs? The Leafs. Oh. The only thing I worry about with that team is Frederick Anderson. You never know what you're well, going to he get. He's like a box of chocolates kind of goalie. He, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's fair. Anybody, anything to add with the Tarani Maple Leafs? No, I'm excited to see them. Um, meanwhile, across the St. Lawrence. No. Is Do you think they're still going to be relevant this year? The Montreal Canadiens? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be relevant because everybody loves a, a freak show to point at. Like <laughs> when they... <laughs> <laughs> yep. When they, oh man, you are on point today. I agree with that too. <laughs> uh, they uh, when Torts was the was the coach here. TSN and the hockey media yeah. loved to point at Vancouver. Right. Um, this is the year that everybody points at Montreal. Um, they did last year. This year it might be even worse. They uh, they 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 spent all season last year talking about how great Alexander Radulov was mm-hmm. and how Radulov f- Radulov Radulov we, Mandelbaum yeah they got we got he's a family man now he's married he has kids he loves playing hockey so they sign him he gets divorced he goes oh. to he goes to Dallas <laughs> um, they, oh well, with those beautiful men um, they added they traded for Jonathan Druin. Yeah. Uh, Simon Big Bucks. He's now the top line center. He looks good. He looks good. There's no com- like. It's just a matter of let's see how he handles the workload. I'm excited to watch. He it. goes five games without scoring a goal to start the season. Look out, Montreal. Trade block. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Burn him. Burn him. <laughs> the fact they've got a potential big star who's French Canadian, he might yeah. get a long leash actually relative I, to other guys. I think he's going to be fine. You know what he's going to do? I actually think he's going to be. No, fine. Paul makes a great point. He's going to be giving uh, interview clips in English. <laughs> and it's like, and then he's gonna give him in French. He's like, I tell you, don't think uh, they uh, treat the French man correctly anymore, and uh, they don't uh, like this. And then he'll shit on the, and then you know they're like, oh, that's he's what my plan. Play is. The I, can't, card? I, I can't tell if that was racist or not. Uh, the it French? was an interesting, 
Interesting. Anyway. It's a little bit of um, Canadian history there. I like, I like the Carl yeah. Alsner yeah. edition. Mark yeah. Strait. That's cute. Hilarious. Alice Hemsky, come on. Get it, getting rid of Alexi Emelin was a, probably a good move. Yeah. Uh, but the Sergachev thing, uh, that was a lot to give up for uh, for Drew Ann. That That kid's really, really good. <laughs> One thing I like is... But Drew Ann's not that old. Yeah, he just not at all. No, he, he's but like he's what twenty four. My stance on defensive prospects versus forward prospects on this show is well documented. That's that's fair. You you home grow a top four defenseman, that's f***ing found money. <laughs> I can find a twenty goal scoring winger on the waiver yeah, wire like that. Yeah, when was the last time they had a star French Canadian? Vin, Vinny Damfus or Pierre Turgeon? That's a long Turgeon. time ago. Nineteen ninety three was a long but time who, ago. And what happened in nineteen ninety three? They won the Stanley Cup. Oh. But who cares Frenchmen. where he's from, honestly? Like these French thing. Canadians? Yeah, it's that's they do. That's why they want to leave. I think, I think they overpaid based on where he's from. I don't think that... Oh, Dr- absolutely. Duran, right, but you Duran do is, he's had flashes, but he's, he hasn't done nearly enough. It's the opposite of a hometown discount. <laughs> to get a shot at a game breaker at that age, but we you're going to overpay typically. We don't, typically. don't know if he's a game breaker. We've got to find out this year but if he's a no, game breaker. No, we don't, right? Because he you sat out lo- lots and pouted lots. Yeah. He sat out in the NHL. He sat out in the AHL. Uh, yeah, there's there's character issues there. You don't know Sergachev's end no, result I d- either. So no, I, mean, I don't, but he's two years younger and he's, a, and he's a defenseman. He could tramp in That's his That's a much sexier the lottery. He's, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying Russian. I don't think it was a bad deal. There's the lure of ketchup in the KHL. <laughs> oh, yeah, all that board. Yeah, that's true. You know, that actually is a good point, too. That like, And it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but it's true. What Gita's saying is that with Russian prospects, they're a flight risk to a certain extent. Uh, we got triamkin hard last year. Just wait till the hackers start coming at the NHL. <laughs> all the players are going to go back home. His rights be just re- went to all sorts of stuff. AK, <laughs> AK Bars Kazan. How did that happen? I, I, get, I guess I have to get on plane. <laughs> uh, on to your hometown team, the boys in blue, green, and white, the Vancouver Canucks. Last year, they stunk up the joint, and this year, depending on who you ask, sleeper team. Dave's sleeper team. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, We're all real excited about Michael Delzato. 94 <laughs> points in a playoff spot. That's kind of what it is. And I'm not just some hopeful fool. This is real analysis of what they've got. Uh, if, well, sorry, Ryan. Did you, were you Just yeah, don't keep going. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing. <laughs> no, no, Paul, you go. You go. Sleeper team. Paul, you know he doesn't like it when you mic Paul, drop. Paul, you go. You go. It was on the So cushion. they added, uh, oh, sorry, Ryan Miller. He's I'm going to quit this podcast so fast, Ryan, so help me God. <laughs> he is going to punch you right in the larynx, All right, you're up. and I'm going to let him. The The depth signings that a lot of people didn't like did push a lot of guys at camp and have pushed a lot of guys down to Utica that some people are not happy about being down um, there. Uncle Willie's favorites. What are you but, doing waving Jason McEnough? <laughs> I think those ones are okay, but... Brock Besser, Jake Vertanen both look good so far. You got to wait a month or two because we know what, uh, you know, uh, we saw in the past from rookies. Not so much Jake Vertanen. Just keep Vertanen out of the electric owl and we're fine. <laughs> but Jared, Jared McCann. Where's that? Main Street. Oh. I think that's not, not there anymore. But keep going, Paul. Well, that, then it'll be easy to keep him out. <laughs> McCann type of first month type stuff. We got to see if they can keep it up long term. You, you can't say McCann around here. He's scoring hat tricks in preseason games. Fine. So. Whatever. Um, He's going to look great on the Orlando Solar Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that Utica has six or seven forwards, for example, that you wouldn't mind bringing up and playing in your bottom six for yeah. a couple of games when there's an injury. Gold As open. opposed to <laughs> yeah. in the past. Shut at least last year where, yeah, if you're calling a guy up from the farm, it got to the point where... It was guys that maybe shouldn't have it was even like been that, in Utica. Yeah, it was like that scene in Major League. It's like I, I've never even heard of half these guys, and the ones I do know are way past their prime. Uh, speaking of that, um, from the Canucks preseason games, I watched. Um, I think Thomas Vanek is nothing to write home about, and I think he'll get hurt five games into the regular that'll season. That'll be that. That'll be that. Everybody will shift up a spot. I liked watching Sam Gagne play. Okay. He's got some 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 hockey sizzle. smarts. Sam's He's got a little sizzle. Some skill. He looks good with Jake Vertanen. He does. Oh. That Bremistroff, uh, Gagne, Vertanen actually looks yeah. good as whether you're going to call them the third or fourth unit, one of the bottom six. They've got a little chemistry. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And yeah. He, just, he just looks like he's got an extra second out there to think with his hockey IQ. Okay. This, this whole season falls on two things. And it's it falls, whether it's fair or not to say, it falls on Jake Vertanen and Brock Besser. Because if they're... It's preseason. We've seen this movie before with Fedor Fedorov. Right. But if they 
can both be between 15 and 20 goals and between yeah. 35 and 45 points. The Canucks make the playoffs. Okay. Well, because then they're picking up a work, uh, the workload of that's that ex- between the two of them. That's that extra goal a game that you're short. Yeah. It is. That's a good point. Yeah. It is them. Yeah. It's also what kind of step forward are you going to see out of Sven Berchi and Bo Horvat, Bo Horvat and who Marcus should Granlin. be the top guys by right. the midway point this season? Because uh, if they're not, I don't see this team making the playoffs. So it's going to be, and that's true for every NHL team. If your young guys can take a big step forward yeah. as a collective, as opposed to just one or none of them you're going to have a probably a successful season because it's the cheap contracts that make a difference in today's NHL and make up for the Erickson and Vanek type <laughs> guys in There's your lineup. And if those guys Sutter. step up, and they don't even have to be really good, if they can both get you know 30 to 40 points, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. you got no mega stars on the team up front, but you have a well-rounded the, the roster. Fact, you might have a shot at the eighth spot, right? but I don't know if the Canucks the really fact that there's no be chasing that. The fact that there's no room on this team... For guys like Magna, Shapu, and Godolbin is a good sign. Yes, yeah, that's a even good, that's a good sign. And there's a, the and that that Subban didn't even get a sniff of a chance. Also a good sign. Did he even come to camp? Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. got a couple. Yeah, oh, he had a goal. Oh, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing here, Jordan? I think you should just go back. Speaking of Subans, I know I don't want to get off topic because we're running down this list. Yeah. But uh, Malcolm Subban, former prominent goalie prospect of the Boston Bruins, yeah, available to anybody that wants him today. He is on waivers. Th- oh. There were a lot of there were a lot of guys oh. like that though at this time of year because yeah, you have to run everybody. <laughs> yeah, but this guy was this guy was a first round pick, Team Canada. Blah 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 blah. Oh yeah, look right there, Malcolm Subban. Oh. On waivers. So yeah. if you're a team that has a little bit of an issue with minor league goaltending depth, Calgary Flames. Yeah. Jordan Tutu is on waivers Calgary, too. The Calgary well they got they got Jason Gillies, who they like. I'm I'm, th- I'm thinking more the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like Garrett Sparks is like already kind of He's already he's got he's yeah. think he's outgrown that spot. Yeah, I think that I and he the, he's uh, Subban's a Toronto kid. I think the Leafs should try to pick him Local up. Local kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Montreal Canadiens, after Carey Price, don't have much. Like Zach Fukali. What if? Wait. What, what if the Canadians picked oh. up Subban <laughs> Jr. <laughs> after PK was there for so long? What would that? Starting be a goal, like number seventy-six, Mal. They gave him his number. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, one thing I'll say about the Canucks yeah. is that would be awkward. At time of recording, there's still one guy that needs to be sent no. down. No. No, people keep saying that. Darren Archibald does not have an NHL contract. I think the reason he's here is they're debating whether or not to give him exactly. a two-way deal. They should. Not that that he's, a, he's signed by the Comets. He's yeah. technically a PTO. But so okay, they've so got the, the roster. the Blues can't come along and like... Break your heart. No, they could. <laughs> Any NHL team could sign him away. Yeah, so they're I checked just, on that, actually. They're okay. just deciding right now he's what his contract status is, but he, I think, will be the... Guy that gets cut, and I that's think, another good sign. Like as good as he was, he had a great camp. He's a really yeah. good minor league guy that you call up when you need. Two way. He's, he's not the first a, call up. He's not an NHLer. When when Thomas Vanek gets hurt, when Thomas Vanek gets hurt in the first in the first period of the first game. You call Archie right back. Maybe yeah. that's why they're keeping him yeah. around. Yeah, um, what I wanted to say it further to Paul gets hurt. Paul's comments earlier on about the Canucks and whatnot is what the whatnot. spring taught us is there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to ever tank again. Yeah, no, no reason. Ever. No. You go for no, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was, West, everybody got worse this year, too. It's not like before. Like, there's there's playoff spots to be had yeah, this year. Just have there, them. There's, there is, yeah, there is. Chicago one, is worse. LA is worse. St. Louis, you could argue, is taking a step back. Minnesota, no one really believes in that shit anyway. <laughs> There's one team that did not get worse, and they are the second most favorite team to win the Stanley Cup this year. The Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton Oilers. They, we'll, we'll get there in a second. They okay. are a pretty good hockey team, and those guys just getting a year older makes them better. So, so far on My, the pucks on it. Go on, Can Paul? I defend myself? Just because I wasn't suggesting the Canucks should tank. No, 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 no. I wasn't saying but, that at all. Because I did make a yeah. comment earlier sort of to that effect, but... It felt like they were pushing really hard to slide into you know the eighth playoff spot or whatever with signings like Vanek. Shit, go for number one. <laughs> go um, for the president's I'm, trophy. I'm with Gita. We love that with winning the president's trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the golden years of hockey in this town. Some people might argue signing Vanek was a, a team tank move, but uh, no, I'm just saying like <laughs> I don't know if you push that hard to you know not have your kids bring you to eighth or ninth place yeah. because you don't want to turn into the maple leafs of but the like all the kids who are years ago all the who kids who are ready kept though kept finishing in ninth place yeah. but paul the difference is all the kids who are ready have spots 
Like Ulevi's not ready, so he doesn't. Oh yeah, get a no. Spot. But Besser and Vertanen, there's room for them on the team with these veterans on. And it the Sedins were not the first power play unit as we saw. Yeah, on Saturday like Horvat, Barchi, Granlin, and the two new kids. Like they still have their spots. We just didn't have enough kids to to really go super young yet. We don't have enough prospects. No, I I'm just I just you know I don't know. You got to be careful with you where you're. You can't keep rolling out a substandard product every year. It's exhausting. <laughs> you like, can, you're yeah, at we a tried lot of those the games. first two years of the, of the podcast. You're at a lot of the. <laughs> you're at a lot of those games with me. It's taking a toll on this market. Like there's a difference though between we can't lose like that every night. We just can't between fielding a substandard team and like a scrappy will give a hundred percent, provide some entertainment. That's what I think that Part they're of that's doing this year. It, it's. It's one of those things, yeah, you, you go for that, but you don't necessarily just try to... I think get. I, nerd- I worry this year that they're going to finish in ninth place but or something. But that means we get meaningful hockey in April. And yeah. in this draft, from what we've seen, you'll get the same player at 12 that you will get and at two or three. And because yeah. of the draft lottery, they could fall. They could finish ninth and draft fifth. Look at the Philadelphia first. Flyers. Yeah. yeah, they could, yeah. Flyers had 92 points last year. They drafted f***ing Nolan Patrick because <laughs> they got a horseshoe up their ass. And they, they couldn't draft fifth because you, your top three are... But that's why this don't. show is good, is that yeah. you and I disagree on everything, and that's good. It's making I'm a very good episode. Trying to, I didn't say it was bad that we were arguing over this. Oh, boy. Fired up. All right, next. Speaking of fire, the, everybody's favorite team, the Calgary Flames. Big, big signing today. Oh, who did they sign? You weren't listening for the first the part. The second of the- greatest <laughs> hockey player who ever lived and the best hair in the history Mark of sports. Mark Messier? Yes, Mark Messier. <laughs> no, Yarmir Yager. brief time he was. He's back. Um, uh, Yarmir. He, was it? he will, in all likelihood, pass Gordy Howe for the most NHL games played this year. So there's With three years in the, in, the, in the Russian league. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gordy also left the NHL for a few years and came back. So it's kind of even Stevens, yeah. Like, like yeah, the not du- quite, but the WHA pretty much was the KHL of its day. Kind okay. of. I I would be interested. I haven't looked up. I should have. I uh, can't wait for that merger. Professional, <laughs> professional games, games played. played. Yeah, that would be I'm a sure good... Gordy's still quite a ways ahead, but not by that much. But yeah, no. But good for Yogs. Um, I, I I've I've criticized teams for pursuing him because of his speed, but yeah. the game's better with him in it than out of it. So and in the Canadian market too, I like it a lot. I like that it's a team he hasn't played for because it gets another guy in the Yagers. <laughs> okay, I was like, is this his first Canadian team? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good for oh. that's great to hear. Yeah, and it'll be good for he, that. He it's a good with story. the Oilers for years when Why he was is over he going in Russia. To Kraft Hockeyville. Because he needs. Well, he's gonna. Okay, help, never mind. I know. He's gonna help raise that money. <laughs> okay. Yarmy Yager's gonna have a a bottle or a you know a bottle, bottle drive, drive. To get that new rink built. Apparently, he's quite the Casanova. He could put a date with Yarmir up on. That uh, may be it. He mm, may get them their new with arena. Yager's post game at. Oh Cowboys? man, they they can retire his jersey on the opening night of the new building. <laughs> <laughs> Although he'll only be fifty or so, so he'll still be playing. <laughs> um, he'll be with that new expansion team in Seattle, the Seals. He, uh, the, the Flames, uh, were the Emerald wild. Seals, the Emerald Seals. Oh God, that'd be so bad. <laughs> Flames were a wild card team last year. They're set the by Emerald Anaheim. Seals. <laughs> they, uh, when they score a goal, it's like, but I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled. <laughs> I was thinking it might tie into the Emerald, uh, casino or whatever it is that we always hear advertised. Well, yeah, that's where all up, like casino. old washed up, all the old washed up entertainers go to perform. That's where Yager can that's go to play his hockey. That's where he takes <laughs> his dates after the game. He's open. He's opening for. Uh, he's opening for Lionel Richie and Smokey Robinson. <laughs> that would be a great night. Actually, I would. I'd go to that. With you. <laughs> Me too. So they got a big sexy defense in Calgary. Do they now? You keep saying this on every show, and Tell I me. completely disagree with you. Mark Giordano, Travis Hamanick, uh, um, those good two guy, other guys. Uh, Dougie, Hamilton, Dougie Hamilton, TJ Brody. Yeah, so yeah, well, it's pretty did. good. Okay, fine. it's pretty good. Pretty go- it's pretty good, good on paper defense. Yeah. Um, as we saw in the preseason, former Pucks on Net guest Brett Kulak right now is in the seven hole. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And uh, they're speaking p- of waivers, Hunter Shinkarik, you're on waivers, Ryan. Oh shit, I'm not going back to Bakersfield. <laughs> oh, I think you're going to the ECHL. Wait, I thought you were coaching some kids or something. Yeah, that's that's my next. <laughs> you game. wish Damn. you'd go to Bakersfield. The AHL team for the Flames is in Stockton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Chino. <laughs> you and Ryan Atwood from the OC. Uh, the Flames have... I think la- they're too young for that reference. Hunter Shakarik would not survive. <laughs> a couple of losses they had this year Chino. were uh, Brian Elliott and Chad Johnson, basically their goalie tandem. Ocho Cinco left town. And nobody really cares about that. Uh, Jonas Hiller was a goalie there last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they brought in new goalies and steady Eddie Lack, taco enthusiast and all-around yeah. nice guy. Yes. Mike, Mike Smith looks super leaky. Yeah. 
That's the weak spot, though. Like it's goaltending, he, they got new. They got new. They somehow went out last year and yeah. got the shittiest bunch of goalies they could get. And they said, "Well, let's let's find some ones that are just as shitty." But hold <laughs> my beer. Yeah, hold my beer. Hold <laughs> my nitro beer. They're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be the. Uh, oh, it's called heroin beer. Somebody corrected Ooh. on us last week. The locals in Calgary call that supercharged beer. Yeah. They sell them heroin beer. Where hold can my. we get? Some. At the, the Red Mile. Mile. Hold oh, that in the sport check it? section. You, get Where it, you can d- I get it in Vancouver? Uh, I don't know. It's you know, you don't want beer connoisseur than I am. Get a, the, fr- the first thing you know, you're drinking a, na- a heroin beer. The next minute, you're on the Red Mile showing your cans for Monaghan. Just don't <laughs> bark up that tree, okay? <laughs> Let's not do that. But yeah, Smith has been bad. showing your wags for yags. He's looked <laughs> okay. He's looked pretty good behind a bad team in Arizona for the last however number of years, but he's not the type of guy I'd go when you're like, we could be a contender this year. Who are we going to go for? Bubbles. <laughs> not only is Mike Smith one of those guys that you're like, well, he's been behind a bad team. That can always you know, yeah, come back like, to bite you. A lot of, but he's also old. Like he, A lot of pucks going yeah. through a lot of body parts in the preseason. Yeah. He's a backup you bring in to support uh, you know, a, a Gibson type of guy in Anaheim right. that might step up and surprise you, but otherwise he'll play good and settles spurts. into yeah, like a nice So they've got two role. solid backup goalies. Yes. I mean, you, well, this is the old saying, right? If you think you have two starters, you don't have one. Yeah. They are I the guess. they are the Philadelphia Flyers of the West now. Mm. Who can play goal? Uh, no, it's not that. No, not those guys. No, Yager. No. Travis Hamnick yeah. will be back <laughs> in that. What's soon. Dominic Asik up to these days? Yeah. <laughs> He's always talking about a comeback. Uh, the next. So so far on our pucks in at ten. The Kippersov we've, effect. We've had the Penguins, the Maple Leafs, the Canadiens. Calgary did not sound as sexy as you sold them to me. No. That, tell that to sports. They got now. moves like Yager, but that's about <laughs> it. But they got a leaky. They got a leaky haul in net. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, Edmonton Oilers last year, McDavid Lo- showed everybody how di- goddamn good he was. Love him, love McDavid. Yeah, yeah, he looks excited looks- to see this sexy team. Yeah, uh, they lost in the second round to Anaheim. After okay. Anaheim had a a destruction tour that Paul, started. Paul has something that he wants to no, say. No, da- uh, let Ryan finish his. I'll yeah. throw it in. Later. Did I screw it up? No, 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 no. It's fine. He's got something good. I can always tell him. Paul, I always try cooking. to like raise my hand and be polite, but people oh, don't here, always have the talking stick. <laughs> I hit myself Ryan in the with head with it a number of times say? tonight. I was just gonna say Leon Dreisaitl oh is amazing, and and you know he's the Gino to his Sid. Well, I was even that's great go back actually. Yeah, you go mess to the Gretzky back in the day, or you look at Ronnie Francis behind Mario Lemieux. These are guys that don't always get the the glory. Right, Messier got quite a bit of attention. The Glenn but, Anderson uh, to Messier's cocaine. You, you make a great but Ron <laughs> Francis is my favorite example because no one talks about Ron Francis, but I mean he's dropped a bit because some guys have passed him but he's in like what sixth, sixth place in yeah, NHL all time scoring Paul yeah. makes a good point because every now and then you go look at at the leaders it's Gretzky it's Yager yeah. it's Messier it's Tau, and then you go like, what the hell's Ron Francis doing up and there? Adam Oates yeah. Ron Francis yeah. and Adam Oates chiseling their way on but those if, assists if you <laughs> can slide in a guy and I, I really like Leon Dreisaitl oh. if you can slide in a guy like that right behind your big star that's what she said but that's <laughs> That's exactly what that leaders, um, that scoring leaders list looks like. It's the player and the player who played with him. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's you and yeah, your teammate. What did what did Mario Lemieux have again? Rob Brown. No, what was his like illness? Oh, uh, non Hodgkin's Hodgkin's lymphoma. Oh, yeah. yeah, so he would have been even higher up on that list yeah. if it wasn't. Uh, I like the Oilers. They looked really fun on Saturday night. Do you, th- do you think they're gonna miss Jordan Eberle? Um, Guys? I don't think so. He was uh, those eighteen I goals. Did it? No, he was gone. <laughs> we'll talk about him. Twenty in a goals. Bit. Twenty goals. Yeah, oh, chiseling. One of my favorite things. Chiselfest. We have a lot of. Go on, P Mac. Well, you know, one of the guys that'll fill in there off Yamamoto, like Tyler Yamamoto, making the team and out Drake Ham, Drake Kajula as well. We'll get more ice time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, their first round pick made the team. Yeah, <laughs> There's smaller a- players possibly getting more of a shot with the slashing rules. It's type kind of, of stuff coming in. It's going to help guys like that make a difference. And they're talented guys. It's kind of a Pittsburgh aspect where you get rid of one of those old guys like Chris Kunitz. In this yeah. case, it's Jordan Eberle. 26-year-old Jordan Eberle is super old. <laughs> yeah, grizzled on this team. <laughs> and you let it, you know, you know, see what he can He's do. ancient on a team of 19-year-olds. <laughs> Apparently, Ebbs has looked very, very good with the New York Islanders. That, okay. That's great because we'll talk about them in a bit because they somehow have cracked the PON top 10. Uh, uh, is it a top 10? Just 10 teams of interest? No, sorry. the Canucks are on it. It's I 10 know. teams of well, interest. Ryan picked them actually, and he forced I them on at, us. I looked at this list. I actually really liked the list. Yeah, me too. Thank Good conversation guys. points. Yeah. The Oilers are expected to are the second favorite team to win the Stanley Cup. Really? 
Who else? Out Why of the, wouldn't they be? They got all the pieces. Who out of the West, man? Name name a name a name an area of that lineup that's that's deficient. No, I, I like them. Chris I don't Russell. know if I would put them. I, I haven't He's gone through the list and I made think, a ranking. I think it has more to do with not being used to seeing the Edmonton Oilers on anyone's favorite list. I'm Everybody, gonna, I'm gonna miss the blue jerseys. Yeah, those are weird. I don't mind the orange. They stand out. I think they're different. My bold prediction is that the Oilers will play the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Stanley Cup final. And and Crosby will win, and then the next year it will be Pittsburgh versus Edmonton again, and McDavid will that win. That is like four years in the row the Penguins are making the finals, according to you. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's happen. exhausting. They're, unless 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 Toronto figures it out, there's uh, Toronto should figure it out. But I mean, I just like that Penguins team. That's yeah, your prediction. Toronto goes away to Montreal. What about and never the, quite what figures about the it chi- out. what about the Chicago Blackhawks? Are they going to make it back to the promised land? Because I think they're going to be playing a lot of golf in April. Yeah, you brought up a lot of really good points. They um, made the playoffs this year, right? Yeah, they scored. But they're on that downward trend. Oh, I- you betcha. When you're bringing in Tommy Wingles and Lance Boma as the answer, <laughs> phew, those are guys that wouldn't make the Canucks this year, oh, and I mean I like that. that name Wingles. Um, they won the Central last year. They were swept by Smashville, and they scored like it was a big deal. They scored three goals in four games. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem that I see from an outsider looking at is that this is a. I don't. I think that their their stars went above Coach Q. Yeah. And they went to Stan Bowman. No, he's not there anymore. Okay. No, what's his name? Yeah, Stan Bowman. Stan still Bowman. There. Sorry, I'm thinking of uh, the guy screwing up Florida right now. Dale Townsend. Yeah, he used to be there. Oh. They went to Stan Bowman. And they said we really miss Brandon Sod, and they went out and said that. And they traded for him. And he's yeah. like, oh, they're go- if they love Sod, they're going to love me bringing back Patty Sharp. Yeah, we'll bring that guy, too. <laughs> Duncan Keith might have a thing or two to say about that. <laughs> Tony Amante is back. Yeah. <laughs> All the guys who sleep with their teammates' wives are back in town. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Uh, one of the problems is they traded away. Really looking forward to that family skate. <laughs> they traded away the bread man. And they, uh, they lost uh, Jalmerson. Did he go to, was he traded, Jalmerson? Uh, he signed. Uh, uh, or no, was he, he Vegas? No, he was traded. Actually, he was traded. He was <laughs> traded. To, he was traded to Arizona for Connor Murphy. Can you right. remind me what Marion Hosa got? <laughs> uh, Marion Hosa has uh, is in the final years of his top loaded contract. He got Nathan Horton. He kind of has he, Nathan. He's yeah, but he has an illness. Yes. Well, they, it's a skin rash, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Isn't they got to stop using that Michael Jackson doctor in Toronto <laughs> and Chicago. <laughs> So Yikes. they have an they have an illness to the uh, <laughs> an allergy to uh, hockey equipment. I, yeah. half the stuff I say is he just for you. That just for your about face. forty years into his life, he, he said he had it for a while. Yeah, and that now he's at an age where it's not safe to take the medic- medication. Mm. He's, and, he's got equipment aids. Yeah, so I think it's a bit of a camp hustle. Yeah, or sorry, a, a, a comp. It's hustle. a Joffrey Lupel. An L I T R L T I R Joffrey Lupel. <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> Uh, that should have been the name of last week's episode. The Joffrey <laughs> Loophole. Ah, oh, Maybe fuck. this week. Why not? Who no, cares? This, this one's going to be called uh, The Curious Case of Yarmir Yager. Oh, Jeff, yeah, no, Joffrey Loophole Jeffrey, is way yeah. better. Joffrey Loophole. Please listen to last week's episode. With, I don't know, some assume it's the name. Or call it The Joffrey Loophole and The Curious Case. <laughs> Why not? Who cares? Nobody uh, reads those anyway. I no, do. we've just gotten too clever. I read them too. Paul, um, or Dave brought up a good point this in the last two episodes that like, he doesn't expect the. He could see the Blackhawks missing the playoffs easily. And now they could make it, but I would not be shocked at all if they didn't. I, and I expect them to not make it. You want a bold prediction? Here's mine. Coach Q gets fired midseason. Mm. No, see, I don't think so. I think he's earned the right. Like I, I'm not saying they won't dismiss him after the year An is over. An honorable discharge. Yeah, he gets to quit. They oh, okay. don't fire him. He gets to quit. The Pat he gets, Quinn treatment. He gets to mutually part ways with the team <laughs> in the spring. And then what? Go back to St. Louis. Yeah, sure. Why not? Would they slide out a, a Keith or Seabrook type of thing just to sort of like shake up the core? I don't think they can anymore because they got rid of Jalmerson. Yeah, his, they couldn't. They couldn't. He's right. They've got a bunch of nobodies after those two on but defense. But if they underachieve to the extent that they'd move people a forward, think it, but it potentially could happen. Who do you move to shake up that core? Like that's, that's part of the problem. Court. They probably should have sold high on one they or two. Of these they should have. They should have kept Darling and sold Crawford off. Then they should have traded yeah. Seabrook for uh, the moon for a, for a defenseman and yeah they and did pick. so well early on partly out of necessity with their bottom six but they, and, and lower end guys and and you they know. may have hung on to a couple of guys a couple of years too long Marion Hosa yeah. two years ago would have fetched you a pretty good yeah. return well you know Coach Q they got away from what what was working for him which is to sell at the right like when they got rid yeah. of Patrick Sharp the first yeah. time it was yeah. like boom it was the perfect time right yeah. now they're bringing him back that's the Joe Sackick school Ugh. of general managing yeah. buying low though. Uh, have, yeah. Have Kane and Taze hit 30 yet? 
Um, nope. Kane is next year. Okay. Taves, I think, is this year. They got lots of good hockey left. In yeah. I yeah, I would pronounce Toes. To- toes? Jonathan Taos. Uh, next Ta- team. Taos. Now, this is a bit of a... Now, on the Pucks in at 10, the New York Islanders. They're kind of homeless. They're kind of homeless again. They got a rink that they they're too big for their rink. They were they're too big for the the Barclays Center. They were too okay. big for. The they went back to Nassau for an exhibition game this Aww. year, and the crowd loved it. Yeah, because everybody in the crowd could see the ice. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is different. Homelessness <laughs> is a, a big problem in the state of New York, especially in the metropolitan area in yeah. the East States. So it's we shouldn't be surprised. It's even affecting the super rich. Uh, they. Yep. <laughs> For just, class. A, for just a little bit of extra money, you we're too could help support the New York Islanders and in now their, we're bringing their quest for a, a new arena in Long Island. Brian Burke's like, hey, shut up. We need that ring. He's playing me. Arms of the Angels by Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> in the background. Sad Jonathan Taves Aww. showing up in his car like a tight hockey player already dressed. <laughs> and to speak more about the plight of the upper middle class, we've got uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders on the line. Uh, uh, you uh, throw in yeah. some three-legged puppies? we yeah. got to get these guys a proper rink to play in. I'm Bernie Sanders. <laughs> That's the we gotta do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do a Larry David; it'll it might help. Oh, fuck this so f- I, I I saw this thing on 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 Twitter the other day about Larry David about a, a, a pitch for a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Yeah, where he's at a sporting event and his shoelace is untied and he just goes bends down to one knee to tie it up. Oh, and people look, Larry David's kneeling <laughs> at the anthem, and then cue that music, and that's how the episode starts. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> that. uh, I wasn't kneeling. <laughs> we gotta go a little. It was a Rockport. We got to go a little quickly through these last three teams. Okay. Uh, they missed the pl- playoffs by one point. 94 yeah. points is the exact number. Uh, they lost Travis Hamanick to Calgary. Right. Ryan Strom to Edmonton. Grabowski to who cares. And JF Barube to somewhere. And they got Jordan sure. Eberle, who said to look good. They say that Everly is going to be the winger finally for... For Johnny Tartars. And Johnny Tartars. Johnny Hockey. Johnny, the real Johnny Hockey is yeah. in a contract John year. John Hockey. Yeah, okay. And like I said, if he's not going to... If they're not going to succeed, why does he want to stay there? They don't have a rink. They don't have a team. They don't have... Their any. pets' heads are falling yeah. off. Is so. he headed for Toronto? Oh, God. The, Do we have to endure another summer of yeah, that? Yeah, it'll probably be a year of that if he doesn't sign. Steven Stamkos yeah. met with the... Uh, who was it that he <laughs> met with? Was it the mayor? He, he, was with, he met with somebody in the golf in the golf course parking lot. I remember that. Yeah, was was he partying with Mayor Ford? Is that what the sales point to R.I.P. <laughs> remember when Americans all made fun of the mayor of Toronto? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. He could have been elected president of America. You know, they almost picked uh, Calgary boy Ted Cruz. So why not Toronto boy? <laughs> We picked the crazy guy or the Ford. Canadian crazy. So guy? Jim Carrey for president. No ha- vaccines for anybody. The Canadian Jim Carrey. Oh wait, they're both Canadian. <laughs> no wait, I no, think the goalie Jim, was American. No, the goalie, the goalie was American. Was American. Net, yeah. net detective is definitely they American. They spelled their names the net definitely. Yeah. Uh, he had two, two R's. If you look at the top line of the of the Islanders, it's good, and then it just kind of trickles off. Okay. Josh was saying. Uh, he was the kid that was kicked out of Islanders training camp on he day one. He likes to sleep in. He slept in. Right. He doesn't know how to. S- he, he didn't set his iPhone alarm. Yeah. He's really made some leaps and bounds. He, had he a was good using year. a. Um, he was using a Samsung. No, what's the phone that sponsors Hockey Night in Canada? A Huawei. Oh, Huawei. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was using that damn Huawei. Uh, he's really improved, and he's expected to have a bigger role this year because they don't have much of a team. And you know, if they have a bad year, they could continue to be homeless and lose a John Tavares to free agency. Uh, Dallas Stars, they're on here last year. They stunk up the joint. They had we 79 took points. Ever to get to the Stars. But it they're so handsome. Yeah. Well, they not are. as handsome. They lost seven, seven abs know. out of eight packs. We've seen Jamie Benn. Uh They lost a couple of guys uh, Sharp, Hemsky, Hoodler, and Cody Eakin. And they went out and got Ben Bishop, Marty Hansel, Mark yeah. Mathot, and Reggie Most importantly, they got the hitch. Yeah, so no matter how good all these guys could jam together, gel together, if, it, if, if Hitch doesn't like them, yeah. it's not going to work well. You four checking? That's a paddling. Well, you Hitch is just going to build a wall across center ice, yeah. and I hear that's very in in the States, oh. and we'll see. It'll be sort of like a precursor to see if you know they'll build he's, other he's walls. He's going to make Dallas's goals against average great again. Nice. Yeah, that's fair. I've heard that about Hitch. Yeah. And finally, the Tampa Bay Lightning are a team to watch because they lost Jonathan Druin. Okay. Druin. Do but they're, they're gaining a clot-free Steven Stamkos. Yeah. It's taking a, all that baby aspirin. The blood's running good. You know how, you know how, yeah. you know how when they, in the playoffs, they like get the game puck and they're supposed to be 16 pucks to sure. mean 16 wins. 
I picture like John Cooper has like an 82 thing and he like every time Steven Stamkos plays a game, he puts something up there because <laughs> he never plays hockey because oh. he's always hurt. Oh, man. I, I That's a guy that I'm really like all joking aside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good for hockey to have Steven, Steven yeah. Stamkos in the lineup. Let's all for everybody's sake for just some kick ass highlies. Highlies. <laughs> as the kids say. Just going back to last week, you guys were talking about being 2000s kids. Wheel s- snipe selly. Uh, they <laughs> lost uh, Ben Bishop, which is never re- you know, it may not be a bad thing. And okay. I, I think Andre Vasilevsky is a, is a Wait, very good Wait, who do they have this year? Andre Vasilevsky. Yeah. He's oh, a fine okay. goaltending prospect. And he played pretty good. So that's it. Right. They got Peter Boudage as the backup. Goalie. They actually have a very, oh, like. Oh, how lovely. They have, a, they have a team that you don't think could put a, put up a lot of points, but they have this depth, and it's like everybody has... Kucherov, Palat, yeah. Kaloran, Johnson. That's yeah. a good freaking they, hockey they've team. They've been a solid team for a while. And Victor Hedman has become the number one guy in that he was supposed to be. So, you know, yeah. watch that. And they got that Sergachev kid and from Montreal. Right. So it's going to be a good thing. So those are the pucks on that 10. Sergachev. Great yeah. uniforms, too. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah, talk right to rip off them Leaf jerseys. Uh, we'll ra- we do them better. Yeah, that's true. And that Steve is Erman. He's a good GM. He's got all his fingers. Love yeah. him. And he knows how and to. And he makes trades. And he, ma- he 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 waits just long enough. And we shit on him for a whole year. Then we go, oh, man, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, he really put it. We were all like, what's he doing? What's oh, yeah, we guy? pressured him hard. Jesus, that's Steve Eiserman. And, <laughs> and now we just go across the ice to the. I'm glad Joe he Sackick. didn't listen to us and then cave. Yeah, Joe Sackick, on the other hand, just trade him, man. Just <laughs> trade Nate, Matt Duchesne. No, man, he's a. Uh, Matt Duchesne's on a timeout. I'm just here to support and respect my teammates. That's what he does. Smug bastard with all them fingers. Uh, that'll wrap it up for this week's podcast. That was our Pucks on at 10. Regular hockey starts on uh, on Wednesday. I'm pretty damn excited. That's so soon. Yeah. And for those who we don't talk about fantasy stats, but if, for those involved in the Pucks on at hockey pool, the draft will be Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. Should we try and get a listener in there? Why? I don't know. Maybe if so, what if somebody listens you to You guys this? do a what? What's going you on? You want in on that? No. I, I don't even know. Where. Huh? Fantas- I haven't done fantasy in a couple of years, but maybe. I'll okay. send you an invite when I get home yeah. tonight. All right. So there. I'll send you an invite to the Yahoo pool. Paul, we, we were totally going to give a, a listener an invite, but now Paul just took it. So send You're your hate welcome, mail. You're welcome, listeners. Uh, so <laughs> once again, if you want to follow the. He's uh, going to panic and draft Shane Corson in the first <laughs> <laughs> Right in. Corson! <laughs> He's coming back. I Follow us on Twitter at PucksNet Sierra, PucksNet Ka. Ah! Rate and review and subscribe on iTunes. Can I throw in one last thing before we sign off? Sure. Because we started off talking about the current events in the United yeah. States and just, but like, you know, we do uh, condolences to everyone yeah. affected and just like everyone's in a weird place right now, I think. And we we weren't making light of it necessarily, but we weren't talking about it in the most solemn way. But yeah, it sucks. And I do hope that this, yeah. if you are concerned about it, you know, call into your local. Uh, politicians and stuff and ask for changes to be made whether it's health care mental health care or uh, yeah. uh gun control because for all of our american our yeah. thoughts are with you totally. for all of our american fans out there um just building on what paul said we're really sorry about what happened uh, and our thoughts and prayers are with you guys but also you know please yeah take action you That's know what, yeah. lobby your lobby your local your local representatives and your local government your state government um this cannot become normal. The norm. uh, a and shoulder it, shrug. And it really feels like no. it. The fact that we're doing a show tonight and this is anecdotal. No, is, here is the thing. We didn't even it, acknowledge what this, happened in Edmonton this week. No, That's like, it. yeah, th- like this needs to stop. Yeah, it needs to stop. Thought, thoughts and prayers are wonderful, but, but actions are s- so much more important. And as I said, there's been one mass shooting in america for every day of the year in 2017 yeah. so it's, it's at least warranting a conversation and we need to encourage that it, and they're called assault yeah. rifles you don't need to <laughs> fill a 10 point buck with 16 bullets in also, 30 seconds you should not be able to check into a hotel with that many of them hockey bags are really big it's um just, but yeah i just wanted ooh. to condolences to everyone and and you know hope everyone's able to uh bounce back you know well from, a lot of a couple of vancouver a one tough. couple of vancouver people were shot too yeah yeah so no. it's it, uh, it, lo- maple ridge guy uh, lost his life last night it, it hits a lot of people it's wider than just the states but yeah especially for our american listeners so we'll leave it at that we'll stop the plugs and then we just hope everybody stays positive and, and that's where our where our thoughts are and that's how we're, we're feel, how we're feeling right now and uh to the local hockey fans in vegas show up to the game oh yeah don't be afraid be loud, be proud. 
you're probably only going to get to celebrate like one goal a game. So really have at her. <laughs> Be nice and have some fun with it. Like you guys talked about their Twitter account. Their don't twi- just try to be a jerk. Like yeah. that's a problem in Vancouver I with some to, hockey friends. I, like I, I, just I, enjoy it. Be nice. Yeah, Rivalries I mean, can be fun, but don't be a the dick whole, about yeah. it. And the whole Canadians thing. I was thinking about this again today. Like the, the whole the 16 thing. They won a couple cups with 20 plus teams in the league too. <laughs> you haven't even won a game yet. So. I actually wanted to talk about their Twitter account. Be respectful. Save it, it for five minutes for pay. Okay. Because okay. we're running out of time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For, the, for those our Patreon backers, including our newest backer, Josh Gould, you can listen for five minutes for paying. Josh saying. Yeah, Joshua Sang's bit. Oh, he was late. He missed it. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash Pucks on that. Five minutes for paying begins right now. You belong among the wildflowers. You belong in a boat out at sea. Sail away. Kill off the hours. Somewhere you feel free.